Dodger Hao, my name is Garrick. Welcome back to Taiwan Lao Wai. So it's probably gonna be a pretty quick video today. Uh, this weekend's been very slow for me. I'm not being really that out and about. But I did discover something interesting. There is a cat cafe uh, within reasonable biking distance of my apartment. For those who don't know, a cat cafe is a restaurant where you eat with a bunch of cats and they like climb all over you, walk all around your table as you eat. At least I think that's how it works. I've, I've never actually been to one before, so I don't know what to expect, but I see an opportunity like that. There's no way I'm not taking that. So we're going to grab a late lunch at Demo House, as it is called. I will see you there. Alright, so we are currently on the outskirts of Guishan District, which is a part of Taiyuan that I have honestly not really explored at all. This is the, uh, the northeast part of the city where it starts to sort of bleed into the mountain ranges a bit. At least it does further in. Like I said, we're still sort of on the outskirts of it, crossing the Nankang River. I've never been fishing in Taiyuan before. I sort of want to give it a try because there are a lot of good fishing spots from what I've been able to gather. Something to look into, I suppose. Like imagine catching your own fish in one of these lakes or rivers and then preparing it and eating it for dinner yourself. So that, that would be kind of cool, I think. Hmm, perhaps an idea for a future video? We'll see. For now though, it's getting close to three o'clock and I am starving because I have eaten nothing all day. Very stupid move on my part, I admit. But we have arrived at Demo House at last. So let's take a peek inside. so far. The menu is very classic uh, American diner. You know, brunch stuff, but also burgers, sandwiches, salads, fried food, that kind of thing. Plus some rice dishes and dumbbury thrown in for good measure, so it's very, you know, a lot of options here. I'm going for brunch because I haven't eaten anything. I went for the uh, smoked salmon croissant uh, platter, which looks very tasty. And while we wait for it to arrive, let's just enjoy the sight of these beautiful cats.
that's coming out. Oh, that's adorable. All right, so we're getting started with some pumpkin milk to drink, because tis the season and it looked tasty, so who am I to say no? Yeah, match. It's very refreshing. It's interesting, I sort of expected, like, along the lines of pumpkin pie spices in here, but I think it tastes more like just straight pumpkin with milk. It's good, just not as sweet as I was expecting but I don't mind at all. Taiwan really loves their fruit milks, and I can understand why. Everyone I've tried has been very nice. Uh, all right, here we go. So we've got our croissant, we've got our smoked salmon with scrambled eggs, we've got a German sausage salad with, they think this is sesame dressing, and I added on a little fried chicken as a bonus, because why not? There's a lot to sample here. Let's start with the scrambled eggs. Oh, that's very nice. It's easy to make bad scrambled eggs, I think, but these are at, like, the perfect consistency. They're, they're not, like, hard as bullets, but they're not too soft that they're unpleasant to eat. They nailed those, I think. Let's give the smoked salmon a try. Oh, that's really good. It has, like, classic locks right there. My Jewish heart is very happy right now. How about this croissant? Let's find out. Something about Taiwan, they really know how to do a good croissant that's flaky. It's, it like shatters in your mouth, the top layer. Taiwan has a very interesting relationship with like Western baking techniques that aren't always one-to-one, -one, but this, this is pretty on the, on the spot, on the money, whatever the phrase is. Now for a little extra fun, put some eggs and salmon on the croissant because that's gonna be great, right? get this at any diner in America, in any major city, and you would not complain. It's interesting, I didn't think I was nostalgic for this kind of food. Uh, I guess I am. Now something completely different, this is very Taiwanese fried chicken. Let's give it a shot. Taiwanese fried chicken is interesting in comparison to like American fried chicken. You can see it has a very different breading style, sort of a different frying style as well. It's a much, much less layered crunch than you'd get with like buttermilk fried chicken or that kind of style or Korean fried chicken. It's like a solid layer of cornstarch, I want to say. And of course you can see they fry the, the chicken in pieces instead of like whole parts of the chicken. It leads to this interesting texture where it's like very crisp and shattery on the outside, but then the inside is very juicy, almost gelatinous. It's interesting. It's taken me uh, a few tries to really appreciate it, but I am warming up to it. Hmm. Man, this is good. All right, let's take a bite of this big sausage. That's all right. That's not my favorite thing. It's kind of cold inside, not as much salt as I want. Taiwanese sausage is, is very different from like Western styles of sausage, so probably a bit of a cultural disconnect there. I don't hate it. I just don't love it. And last but not least, I don't think I, I need to try the salad, but just for fun. How much the messiest way I could have possibly gone about that? I really like the dressing. The sesame dressing is one of my favorite kinds of dressing. This is definitely hitting the spot on that front overall. I call this a resounding success. I'm gonna finish eating, maybe play with the cats a little more, and then we'll see what's what. Afro, Afro, whoa! My god, it is bright out today. The sun is streaming like right in my face. That was really tasty. Uh, the price was 3.80 NTD, which I think is very reasonable for that amount of food. But we're not actually done yet because I discovered literally pretty much right next door to Demo House, there is a souffle pancake shop. And I want to check that out.
Alright, so this place is called Cafe Shop. It's literally just uh, a few buildings down from Demo House. I actually got very lucky. The place was packed when I walked in, but literally a minute later, uh, one of the groups stood up to leave, so I managed to get a table. So that yellow thing over there is the, the machine you order at. And uh, as you can see in my video, this is also a brunch place. It's got sandwiches, it's got eggs benedict, which honestly looks very tasty. If I hadn't, like, just had brunch already, I would be tempted to, to try this place out as well. Something for next time, I suppose. But for now, we are just getting souffle pancakes. And a drink, because I'm still thirsty. So for those of you who don't know, souffle pancakes, uh, I think are Japanese in origin. I don't know the exact science behind them, but uh, there's something they fold into the batter. I think possibly whipped cream of some kind. Whatever, I'll let you guys look up the science on your own. Uh, the point is, whatever they do to these pancakes, it makes them super light and super fluffy, like these little squishy, pillowy clouds of pancake. My mom went through a phase where she tried to like make souffle pancakes once every week, and I think we managed to pull it off successfully once. It's a very tricky technique. It, it is easy to mess up, much like a, a regular souffle, as you might imagine. But when it works, my god, is it delicious. So I'm excited. All right, starting off with some sparkling berry water. This kind of stuff is very refreshing. It's like a big punch of summer right in the middle of the winter. That's the tropics for you. Gotta love them. All right, it was a bit of a long wait, but it has arrived at last. Look at how gigantic these things are, my god. As you can see, when I break into it with my fork, the inside is very light and fluffy. It's so wobbly, it's hard to get a, a solid grip on it with my fork. Not risk waiting for this to fall, let's dive right in. Oh, that's really good. It's like, it's the, the pancake taste you know and love, but like, aerated out and expanded. My god, that is delicious. I got mine with a bit of ice cream. Let's try that together. Oh yeah, that's good. Just that, that little addition of that sharp sweetness with the, the, the mellow sweetness of the pancake. That is money, my friend. It's hard to convey just how aesthetically and mouthfeely satisfying this is uh, just through videos. The thing about souffle pancakes is just they, they feel good to eat. They are, they are pleasant as they go down uh, in a way that not much food is. It is absolutely an indulgence, but it is one worth making every now and then. God, that's good. Ah. <sighs> So ends another productive day of eating way too much food. And once again, the sun is in my face. Good God. Just want to take a quick look at this river as I'm crossing back over it because, I don't know, I think it's just really beautiful, you know? So souffle pancake plus uh, the berry drink was 350 NTD. Overall, I spent 730 NTD on today's extended lunch. It's probably gonna end up being dinner too because my God, I am stuffed. There are a lot of fun little restaurants all throughout Taiwan and all throughout the rest of Taiwan as well. I know there's no earthly chance of being able to visit all of them, especially with uh, me doing Mission Michelin in the background as well. This is a fun little excursion to make. Both these places are worth a visit if you're in the area. I am very satisfied. For now though, I'm going to head back to my apartment, crash for the rest of the day, and sleep off this food. Once again, thank you for joining me at Taiwan Lao Wai. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, smash the bell, share with your friends, all that good stuff. And as always, I will see you next time. Zai Jian. Bye bye.